in Chicago. He is board certified in internal medicine, cardiovascular medicine, nuclear cardi cardiology, lipidology, and hypertension. A dedicated book lover, reader, writer, calligrapher who loves to spend time with his family. And for those of you who are not aware, members of the Social Justice Committee of All Peoples and members of the Salam Peace Network have been bringing educational presentations about Islam and the commonalities and distinctions between other faith traditions to our community. Our mission is to work together to build the beloved community. You may see more of our story and some presentations at the congregations and the Salam Network's websites. Now, for those of you on Zoom, let me give you this note. We will be looking for any questions you have or comments after Salim's presentation. It's a little hard to juggle seeing the questions during the presentation, so wait until after the presentation, please. And you can ask questions in the chat, and then we will go from live questions here to the chat room, back and forth. Now, I'm most honored to present Dr. Salim Sayal and his presentation on divine penmanship. Thank you very much, Dennis. It is indeed my pleasure and honor to be here. And uh, if I can have the first slide, please. Um, and that young man is 72 years old now. Um, Next. Next. So that's just uh, divine penmanship. Uh, it's just an introduction uh, about Islamic calligraphy. And uh, those are my credentials. I still practice. I am mostly retired, but I practice uh, one day a week. I don't know how long I'm going to continue. But uh, I'm enjoying doing calligraphy, reading, writing, and all that. Um, there are some handouts. Please get them. The article was published just a couple months ago in Louisville Medicine. It's a pretty thorough yet uh, comprehensive uh, article. So next slide. See, I can see it from here better. This is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, in the name of Allah, Allah is the other name for God, and we'll come to that in a moment. The infinitely compassionate, ever merciful. Next slide, please. This is also Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It's my uh, created khat. You'll be hearing the word khat, K H A T T, which is a script or a style. Um, throughout this presentation, again, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, um, the name of Allah, the most beneficent, ever merciful. Ah, the laser works. And uh, next slide. I want to thank Dennis uh, Neiman, of course, uh, Reverend uh, Bruce Beisner, Ellen Wade, Joe, uh, and uh, several others. Uh, I met our young man over there with the AV department. Thank you very much for all, all, all your help. Uh, thanks very much for the unanimous vote of the congregation to include Islam in all people's sources of inspiration and their efforts at the international level of the Unitarian Universalist Association of Congregations to do the same. And that will hopefully take place. And we'll continue pushing for it, of course, requesting it. Next slide, please. The objectives are listed in this slide to familiarize audience about this supreme art form in Islamic culture. Describe the origin, evolution, and different styles and scripts, the khats, we can, talk, we can say, uh, how they evolved. It's, going on for 1,400 years or longer, and continued to flourish. Um, 
over the centuries. There are regional differences in Islamic calligraphy, including Chinese to the east, and uh, of course to the Andalusia, the old Andalusia, Spanish influence. In between, there is Arabic, Persian, Mughal, and Ottoman influence on Islamic calligraphy. And also to describe the increasing popularity of Islamic calligraphy among Muslims as well as non-Muslims from simply a static artistic standpoint. Next slide, please. Allah is the name, uh, next slide. This is written in Arabic. And of course, here it says, Hear, O Israel, God, your God is one in Judaism. We believe in one God in Christianity. There is no God but Allah. Allah is the other name for God. The Christians, uh, Arab Christians, call God Allah. It's not a different uh, creator, not a different deity. That's how we think and we maintain that Islam belongs in the monotheistic tradition. It's one of the three monotheistic religions. Tawheed is, a, is an Arabic word. It means uh, oneness, oneness of God, which is Unitarianism. It's interestingly, in your congregation, that word is there too. Islam really very strongly asserts, and it's an unwavering faith in Unitarianism. Uh, you cannot associate God with anybody else, do not worship, cannot worship as a Muslim any other entity. Next slide. This is uh, a calligraphy by a person, young man who is 40 years old, Ben Kalander. He has become so popular and so famous and very expensive too, by the way. Uh, he is amazing. He's just a God-given thing. And he also, uh, in addition, went to a National College of Arts in Lahore. And uh, you can see here, if you can read Arabic, this is Allah. And this is the surah, the 112th surah, which talks about Qul huwallahu ahad. It starts with, say, there is only one God. And I think next slide will show you a translation as well. Say, God is one, God the everlasting, who does not give birth, who is not born, and who has no equivalent. Surat Ikhlas, number 112. If I read it in Arabic, bear with me. Qul huwallahu ahad, Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad, wa lam yakullahu kufwan ahad. This was calligraphed in 1327 by Mustafa Effendi, an Ottoman era calligrapher, which is now current Turkey, of course. Next slide, I, I keep trying to push my, my clicker, but another calligrapher has written beautiful sweeping uh, strokes with a broad pen and then a smaller pen. Bismillah Rahman Rahim is here and Allah's name is here. And then Kulhu Wallah, the same Surah al Khlasit in a circle or what can be called round out. Come on in, my nephew, another nephew is here. At least my family is here, and several friends are here too. So thank you very much for coming. Next slide, please. So this one is a uh, surah, uh, an ayat actually. Ayat is just a portion of the chapter. It is Allahu nuru samawat wal ard on both sides. And this one is written by Gahar Kalam extremely famous calligrapher. And I had the honor of meeting with him three years ago when I went to Pakistan. <clears throat> he has since uh, departed this earth. Uh, but extremely wonderful person, we'll see his picture. God is the luminous light of the heavens and earth. According to this ayat. Next slide, please. And this is Wallahu for him are the beautiful names, so call him by those names. 
And two names are right there, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, compassionate and beneficent. So those important names, but there are 99 names and every Muslim calligrapher has to write, or they do, there is no compulsion, to write those 99 names in some khat that's already established or your own. I had to write twice because, uh, and it took me three months because you write one a day or something like that. So 99 names of God. Next slide. This is how it all started. Ikra. Ikra means read. And that exhortation was the first word of God's revelation to the prophet Muhammad in 610. He used to go away and meditate in a cave. He was well to do, 40 years old, married to a very uh, rich lady. So he was financially, and he was a uh, trader himself. He was quite well off, but he would, uh, but something was missing. So he would go outside uh, the, the Mecca where he was born and in the mountains in a little cave. Sometimes he would take Ali, his cousin, and sometimes not, sometimes he was alone. But he was confronted by an angel, archangel, Gabriel, Jibrail, and uh, who said, you are the prophet of God. And he was truly shocked and terrified. So he ran back home and his, his wife held him. And uh, then they went to uh, her uncle and who told him that you may indeed be the prophet of God. So the divine revelation was later compiled in the Quran and it kept coming piecemeal over the next 30 years or so, or 23 years. Uh, Arabic metaphors for calligraphy are many and we'll see some of them. The pen is the ambassador of intelligence and the messenger of thought and the interpreter of the mind. Calligraphy is music for the eyes. Next slide, please. Beautiful writing, or khattul haseen, or husne khat. Husne khat is in, in uh, Turkish language, but khattul haseen is in, in uh, Persian as well as in Arabic. It's a visual art form in Islamic history spanning many centuries and is shared by a common Islamic cultural heritage. The art of Islamic calligraphy has been practiced in Muslim lands from China to Al-Andalus, including Arabia, Ottoman, Persian, and Mughal domains, uh, which was the Indian subcontinent. Interestingly, Mughals descended from the Mongols. Yes, those people who killed and pillaged and, and uh, shed a lot of blood. And eventually they found the right way and they accepted Islam. And uh, one of the uh, out, offshoot was the Mughal Empire that started a tremendous civilization in the Indian subcontinent. And, uh, and I, I see some of my friends sitting here. We are from, from India, bigger, bigger part. And then India got divided into East Pakistan and West Pakistan. And now we are from People sitting here are, 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 from, from, are from West Pakistan, which is now West, which is just Pakistan now. The East Pakistan is now Bangladesh. And I actually found out that they have a special khat in Bangladesh. It's really beautiful. Islamic calligraphy is highly venerated and admired by Muslims because of its association with Quran. 90% of the calligraphy is, is Quran. And hadith is the sayings of the Prophet. Uh, profound love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and deep respect for the Prophet sallallahu wasallam are the core components of Islamic calligraphy. Next slide. This says in a, in a, a khat that's called Divani, al khatul husne nuzhatul uyun. Beautiful writing is the pleasure for the eyes. Next slide. And this is written by Muhammad Zakaria. 
we will talk about him as well. He wrote a little monograph, uh, wrote about an introduction to Islamic and Ottoman calligraphy. Next slide. Uh, very quickly, let's talk about an iconism uh, and representa representational art in Islam. An iconism is the absence of material representations of the natural and supernatural world. In, 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 in essence, drawing pictures was not really a good idea. A lot of calligraphers do not want to do that. They would rather write beautiful words of God instead of uh, making pictures. But it does exist. Islamic calligraphy grew eminent in part because of religious restriction on representational art. The graven image, we all know the second uh, commandment was. Graven images mean you make images and then worship them. Uh, next slide, please. Representational art, however, exists. We know that. Uh, Catholicism, Mughal Empire, they made their own pictures, had, had uh, artists come and uh, make their pictures, but they also hired calligraphers. And some of these princes and kings were actually calligraphers themselves. Ottoman Empire, same thing. Shiaism, uh, they have representational uh, pictures of Hazrat Ali. Uh, I think there, you're sitting here, my friend who's a Shia, and I've seen those pictures. But pictures of the Prophet are not a good idea. Drawing because I think it, it was the uh, concern that uh, people would start worshiping the prophet. Next slide. The avoidance of artistic depiction of people is called an iconism. While the Quran itself does not prohibit depictions, such depictions, it does prohibit idolatry. Representational art of the Prophet Muhammad is not recommended. This prohibition is not exclusive to Islam, but is found to varying degrees in all the Abrahamic faiths, since they all draw from the same well. Next slide. So if you see uh, Muhammad's picture riding this horse, special horse, and he ascended to heaven, it's called Miraj. There was a union of, uh, or, or view uh, the, of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, when, when Prophet went there. Calligraphy is the beauty of handwriting. It is the major Islamic art that was considered to give pleasure to the eye, joy to the heart, and fragrance to the soul. This is attributed to Imam Ali, who was the cousin of uh, the Prophet. Next slide, please. So, what is all this fuss about? Where did it come from? But it came from this area called Hijaz, which had Mecca and Medina. Medina is 200 miles north. And uh, when people in Mecca made the Prophet's life miserable, he had to migrate to Medina and started a new, new, uh, new uh, century, uh, essentially, the beginning of uh, uh, calendar. But after the death of the Prophet, Islam spread like wildfire. It took over Persia, it took over Egypt, it went to Anatolia, which became Turkey or Ottoman Empire. It went to Indian subcontinent, and then, of course, China, and then on the west side, it, it was the northern part of Africa, Morocco here, and then across the uh, Strait of uh, Gibraltar in Spain, mostly southern Spain, which was called Andalusia. And they, this spanned wonderful civilization in that part of the world as well. Next slide. So I'll give you a couple of examples of the east and the west Calligraphy. Calligraphy in China is called Sini, S-I-N-I. And this one is called, it's called Tabakkaltu Alallah, 
trust in God. And if you read this, it looks Chinese, doesn't it? And there is Chinese here, which is Chinese to me, so I can't read it. Uh, but I can read this, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, from down to down, bottom to top. Next slide. Similarly, this is uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in a very beautiful style, which is a continuous, what is called musalsal, means continuous. So it's, it's called Sini, S-I-N-I, Chinese khat. Next slide. So this is all the way to the west in uh, what's called Maghrib. Maghrib is Andalusian, Moroccan, and uh, some people call it um, uh, Spanish. But Andalusi or Maghrabi or Moroccan is a distinctive script that stemmed from Kufic. We'll talk about Kufic, which was the origin. That was sort of the mother of uh, calligraphy. So you can see these rounded ends and very, very distinctive uh, writing, and that's called Andalusian or Maghrabi script. Next slide. It's another one, beautiful Andalusian style. This uh, form is preserved in Timbuktu, which apparently has a lot of Muslims. Next slide. This is Bismillah Rahman Rahim, written in really quite beautiful Maghrabi language. Maghrabi khat, not language. Language is still Arabic, but it's written in a different khat. Next slide. Holy Quran has been a constant source of intellectual and spiritual reflection, wisdom, and serenity for the Muslims throughout the centuries. Next slide. Muhammad Marmaduke Pictal was a British individual who converted to Islam and then translated it in English. It was one of the first translations of uh, Quran in English. The Quran cannot be translated adequately because it should be read in Arabic and, and most Muslims read the Quran in, in Arabic and uh, they of course read it in, in your own language too. The book, the glorious Quran, that inimitable symphony, the very sound of which moved men to tears and ecstasy. Next slide. Ismail Rajai al Faruqi uh, was an, was a, uh, an Egyptian, uh, a tremendous scholar. He wrote a beautiful book called The Cultural Atlas of Islam. He and his wife. He wrote extensively on the genuine, aesthetic, and practical features of Islamic art, and critiqued some leading Orientalist scholars of Islamic art who had written disparagingly about Islamic art, particularly lack of representational art. He considered Quran as an exemplar, the sublimest expression and the masterpiece of Islamic art. There is not a Muslim in the world who has not been moved to his or her's very depths by the Quran's rhythm, composition, and eloquence. There is not a Muslim on earth whose inner being has not been stamped with beauty of the Quran and reshaped after its pattern. Next slide. Pablo Picasso was a very famous Spanish painter 1881, uh, birth, 1973, his death. He was a prolific painter. More than 20,000 works were created by this man. And he famously said, if I had known there was such a thing as Islamic calligraphy, I would never have started to paint. I have strived to reach the highest levels of artistic mastery but I found that Islamic calligraphy was there ages before I was. Next slide. The art of the Quran, treasures from the Museum of Turkish and Islamic Arts, uh, November 8, 2016, Sally and I were lucky to go to Washington and see this wonderful, uh, you know, 
exhibit of manuscripts and loose pages dating from the 7th to 17th century, which had been uh, compiled by the government. And uh, it was absolutely amazing to see huge Qurans and then very tiny Qurans. And in between, there were all kinds of, these are all handwritten. Uh, next slide. Evolution of Islamic calligraphy and calligraphy art. Uh, Arabic is the revered language of the Quran. We all know that. Arabic calligraphy, long considered a sacred art, has been regarded as the visible embodiment of the divine word. And there is inexhaustible treasure of Quranic verses, hadith, which is saying of the sayings of the Prophet, Arabic proverbs, poetry, as well as God's attributes, asma'ul husna. And there are regional differences. Infinite numbers of forms allowing artists to explore because there is so malleable and uh, uh, modifiable that Arabic words can be written. Next slide. This is name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Peace and blessings be on him. Uh, written in very beautiful Sulus. S-U-L-U-S or T-H-U-L-U-T-H, Khat, Muhammad. Next slide. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad is the prophet of God. Next slide. Ali, Imam Ali was the first Islamic calligrapher. And uh, this is, the uh, next, next slide will show you uh, a, from reportedly Dr. Dr. Hazrat Ali's Quran from Splendors of Islam by Wilfred Blunt. Next slide. So what are the implements and tools of calligraphy? Next slide. Um, this is written by Ahmad Kara Hisari. He was an Ottoman uh, Calligrapher, keep going next. These things will, will come down. And this is Ayat al Kursi, which is 255 uh, Ayat, chapter 2. Calligraphy is traditionally written with a reed or bamboo pen. The reed is aged, treated, and specially carved to hold ink. Most calligraphy is written in black ink, but now, of course, we have color inks available. Uh, when made with, from soot, uh, dissolve gum arabic and distilled water, this ink does not easily fade. Calligraphy can be written, of course, on many surfaces, uh, paper, parchment, textiles, metal, ceramic, wood, stone, glass, ivory. When they wrote it on camels, shoulder blades, and parchment it was a different story, but when paper came, and marriage of paper with Arabic language was just wonderful for the calligraphers. This was the work. Keep going, and uh, you will see two more panels to complete it. In the Sulaymaniyah Mosque in Istanbul, designed by the renowned calligrapher Amath Karahisari. Next slide, please. So, it's an art that needs a lot of practice. Significant patience, a lot of columns, but most importantly, an endless supply of paper. <laughs> In the Muslim context, calligraphy is akin to worship. In stylized form, calligraphy has been ubiquitous on pottery, ceramics, sculptures, woodwork, textile, Islamic architecture, including mosques, when it's written on, on the buildings, it's called epigraphy instead of calligraphy. Next slide. The pen has special significance in Islamic symbolism. It's related in the Hadith literature that the first thing God created was the pen, whose duty it was to record all events until the end of time. You know those angels sitting on our shoulders, writing down. Um, 
And this is from Muhammad Zakaria, who wrote in this uh, small book called Brocade of the Pen, The Art of Islamic Writing. And uh, this is written by a calligrapher from my city of birth by the name of Ibn Kaleem. I did not have the honor of meeting with him, but my brother Zubair met with him, and uh, he was one of the famous, most famous uh, calligrapher of Pakistan. And he created this khat, which is called khat rana Rana means beautiful, gorgeous. And uh, his, uh, I have met his two, two children, who are, well, actually there are four children, who are calligraphers as well. Next slide. So this is written, Iqra, um, that was the first ayat given to the prophet. Read, your Lord is the most bountiful one who taught by means of the pen, who taught man what he did not know. Next slide. The calligrapher stamps his love on the paper using the pen. The reed which moans with despair in the hands of the ne player, which is the bansuri, the flute, because they both come from the same plant. The bamboo, depending on the size and everything. Uh, the reed plays, a uh, player dances madly with the yearning for reunion with God in the hand of the calligrapher. Raksa kalam, or dance of the pen, is a metaphor of uh, the pen writing beautiful words. The moment of the calligrapher begins to write, the moment the calligrapher begins to write, he finds himself in the act of praying. The reed pen on the hand becomes whirling dervish, who turns around and around, making the swirls and swoops and all kinds of stuff. Uh, this was written by Hikmat Ulkur, who was a pupil of Hassan Shelabi and we'll talk about him. Uh, he's the grand master of calligraphy in the world right now. He's a living legend from Istanbul. Next slide. This is from Quran. Noon, noon is the, uh, noon is considered to be the ink pot. Noon wal qalam wa ma The noon, the Column, they write things, they inscribe things. It's actually, it goes to the next ayat, says that the, they will write that you are not, you know, out of your mind, you are the prophet of God. By the column and what they inscribe is, is a famous uh, saying in the Quran. Next, next slide. This is uh, a book written by Sh Sheila Blair and Jonathan Bloom. They say husband and, and wife uh, team. They have done so much research on calligraphy and Islamic civilization. Next slide. So these are beautiful pens of, made of uh, different reeds, bamboos from different parts of the world, and of course wood of all kinds. You can make pens out of that. Next slide. It can be written on all kinds of surfaces, as you can see. Next slide. And this is the Quran box from 1330. Uh, the Museum Pergamon, Museum Berlin, Germany. Next slide different surfaces, uh, calligraphy is written on those. You're not sleeping, are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Next slide. Now we talk about the scripts, styles. Scripts were created to write the Quran, court documents, small scripts to send mail by pigeon post, large scripts by architectural for architectural inscriptions. Four regions in particular were important in the development of calligraphy scripts. The Arab world, from Morocco to Iraq, uh, the Ottoman Empire, present-day Turkey and beyond, Persia, present-day Iran, 
and Indian subcontinent under Mughal dynasty. Next slide. And, and there are over 100 styles, um, six primary styles, and uh, additional artistic forms named based on width of the pen, curvature of style, place of development, and the name of creator. So these are a few examples. Khat al-Kufa, Khat al-Sulus, Khat al-Nasr, Khat al-Talik, Khat al-Divani, Khat al-Rika or Ruka. There is very little difference between the two. Tughra, and then zoomorphic, in the form of an animal, uh, a beautiful animal, the calligraphy is written in the body. Next slide. These are the fillers. Uh, if you see a calligraphy piece, even, even my pieces, you can see there are a lot of fillers. And what are these? These are simply decorative. Uh, and some of them are for, for vocalization, uh, ornamentation, there are symbols. Uh, I, I particularly like the timak and terfil. This is the Fimak, uh, inverted comma, and this one is beautiful. And you can modify it, and then the meme, which is M in English, and then Thurfil on top of it. It's just decorative, makes it beautiful. And these are the vocalization diacritics, Hamza, Sukoon, Shadda, Dhamma, and uh, Kasra, up there, and uh, fata, which is the, uh, the one gives vocalization upwards. And uh, next slide. This is an absolutely gorgeous book. It's a two volume, huge book, written by two people. Ahmad Mustafa is an Egyptian, and Stephen Sporrow is a British gentleman. Um, it describes the account of the geometry of Arabic script, written in Arabic alphabets and codified by Ibn Muqla uh, in Baghdad. This, is, uh, this has survived and thrived over many centuries. This is called proportional script, khat uh, mansub and I'll show you a circle uh, that he came up with, and the alif, the first alphabet inside it, and the other people came up with the dots. How many dots? Three amazing calligraphers. This triad of calligraphers, Ibn Mukla, he died in 1940. Ibn, Ibn Bawab, they didn't know each other because they were in different centuries, and uh, died 1022, and Yaqut al-Mustasimi died in 1298. Next slide. So those are the three people, Ibn Mukla, Ibn Bawab, Yakut al Mustasimi. Next, next slide. Ibn Mukla, he uh, codified the six scripts that became the foundation for the practice of calligraphy, uh, established a proportional writing system that used a circle, as the circle, with the diameter of the letter alif as its basis wrote extensively about the art of calligraphy and devised theories of letter uh, shape. He was born in Baghdad, became head of the state library, and then there was a lot of intrigue and uh, animosities and jealousies, and the poor guy was tortured. Uh, he, was, uh, he served under three different kings. I hate to say this, but then his right hand was chopped off. So he didn't give up writing calligraphy, God's name. He learned by writing with the left hand. That was chopped off. Then his tongue, tongue was chopped off, and then he was tortured, and he died. So such a sad story. I, I wanted to eliminate it, but it's part of the, part of the biography. Uh, but he gave us so much. Next slide, please. This is the concept of proportional script, or khat al-mansub. Uh, there are three elements, the height of the alif, the width of the alif, the final element consists of the hypothetical circle uh, that all the letters should fit neatly inside the circle. 
so proportion is very important in Arabic calligraphy. Next slide. Ibn al-Bawwab, the second one, late 10th century. And uh, he was born a commoner, a doorkeeper's son, began his career as a house painter, became a book illuminator, took up calligraphy, was an imam in a mosque, wrote 64 copies of the Quran, which is not easy. Only one of which still exists in Dublin's Chester Beatty Library. Sally and I were there in, in uh, Ireland, so we said, well, let's go to Chester Beatty. And we enjoyed uh, looking at the manuscripts. Next, next slide, please. Yakut al-Mustasimi, early 30th century. He served as Caliph Mustasim's uh, slave, actually. And then they, that's why his name is Mustasimi. Gave the letter shapes now new dimensions by emphasizing the slanted cut of the pen. The chisel that we see on our markers, that was by this guy, Yakut al-Mustasimi. And uh, that, what does the chisel do? It increases the length of the surface of the writing. It gives it more finesse because it's thinner and it gives us really um, a tremendous beauty. So chisel has been, of course, taken over. Uh, he wrote prolifically, made 364 copies of the Quran. Several of them still exist. Next slide. So this is the first khat called Kufik from the Hijazi script. It existed before the, the advent of Islam. It's noted for its angularity and squareness. It was somewhat ungainly, but it's still used. It was modified tremendously during the first three centuries of the Islamic uh, period. The Holy Quran was written and recorded in Kufic style. Next slide. This is Kufic. I think it's quite beautiful. That's called Khat al Kufa. And uh, next slide. This is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim again. Next slide. And this is called Square Kufic. It's fitted in this. Uh, this is called Square Kufic. Very different. And one of the sons, actually the oldest son of Ibn Kalim from Multan, is an expert in this particular khat. Next slide. This is gorgeous. It is plated and floral, and uh, uh, it, it still exists. It is still extant. Uh, there is no power, no strength except from Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Muslims actually say this quite a bit. Next, next slide. Khat al nasq mean copy. This is one of the earliest scripts redesigned by Ibn Mukla, uh, using a very comprehensive system of proportion. And this is written even currently, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Particularly, all the Qurans in the mosques are written in this particular khat, khat al nasq also called Nesi, N-E-S-I-H. Next slide. This is in India, Khat al -Nas. Next slide. Bakul Rabbir Arham Huma, Kamar Biyani Sahira, and say, Lord, please be beneficent to my parents. Since I was a little baby, they took care of me. Next slide. Muhakkak, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, khat developed in the 10th century in Baghdad and means strongly expressed. And you can see these swooping down of uh, this particular khat. 
And uh, it is still uh, used, particularly writing Bismillah. Muhakkak is most often written in conjunction with Rehani, which is the smaller version of Muhakkak. And next slide, please. This is uh, my rendition of Muhakkak. Rabbi Yasser wala tu'asir, Rabbi Tamim bil khair. God, make it easy for me and not difficult for me and make it end well. Any, anything you want to start, particularly calligraphy or some new venture, if you read this dua or prayer, uh, you will be heard. Next slide, please. This is Rehani, smaller version of Muhaggak. Next slide. Khatr Ruka or Rika is a small sheet, means small sheet, which could be an indication of the medium on which it was originally uh, created. It's a style that has evolved from Nasr and Thuluth, and it's written very commonly. The Arabic people who use the language all the time, they write it in this particular style. Next slide. This is Rika. This is how it's written, quickly. Next slide. Khatat Thuluth is called the king of calligraphy. It, is, it was first formulated in the 7th century, fully developed in the 9th century, is more imposing and impressive style. As it evolved over the centuries, examples of these, this particular khat can be found in architectural uh, uh, monuments at the, in the Dome of the Rock, which was restored by the order of the Caliph al-Mamun in 1813. A barely visible narrow belt of inscription was added in Thuluth script. This was eventually to become the most important script in calligraphy. Next slide, please. This was written by uh, a ruler of the uh, Ottoman Empire by the name of Sultan Ahmad III. Muhammad al-Hadi, Muhammad is the guide. Uh, he was a uh, re leading royal practitioner of the art of calligraphy. Next slide, please. Kullo man alayha fan. Everything is destined to perish. Next slide, and the ayah continues. Wayabka wajhu rabbaka. But only the majesty of your Lord will endure, the Lord of glory and honor, Quran 55, 27, and 28. Uh, so this sleuth is very, very distinguished by its beauty and majesty. Tawakkaltu Allah for trust in God. Next slide. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Benedictions on the prophet as well as his family. Next slide. This is my rendition of uh, the Sur al-Akhlas that we talked about early on. Next slide. In Allah Jamilun Yuhibbul Jamal. Allah is beautiful and loves beauty. Next slide. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min zalimin This was Jonah in the whale crying out to God. He said, there is no God but you, the Holy One. I have been among the transgressors. Next slide. Haza min fazli rabbi. All this success is due to the mercy of my Lord. Next slide. Inna akramakum in dallahi atkakum. The best among you are the ones who have taqwa. Taqwa is sort of a fear of God, not the dread of God, but the fear of God. You don't want to do something that God has prohibited, that kind of thing. Uh, next slide. Allah bi zikrullahi tatma'inul qulub. Look, it's the uh, remembrance of God that brings peace to the heart. Next slide. Next is Khatul Diwani. Diwani script is uh, also quite beautiful. 
Uh, it derives from Diwan, the name of the Ottoman royal chancery, created by Hussam Rumi. This script was used in the courts to write official documents and reach the height of its popularity under Suleiman I, the Magnificent, in the 16th century. So final shape in the 19th century, it is very popular still. Next slide. This, these are examples of khat diwani so we'll go through quickly. Khairun nasi anfa nas. The best among human beings is the one who is of use to other human beings. Hadha bin fadl rabbi, all this is because of the beneficence of my lord. Next slide. Again, this is in a circle, Haza bin fadl rabbi in diwani style. Next slide. This is my rendition of Haza bin fadl rabbi long time ago. Haza bin fadl rabbi. So, which of the benef benefactions of your Lord will you deny? God has given us so much. And this is a beautiful um, chapter in the Quran. And a lot of calligraphers love to write. Next slide. This is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the first chapter of Quran, all praise to God who is the Lord of the universe. Next slide. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is written in a shikasta, it probably is out of uh, order, but that's the uh, first chapter of Quran in shikasta, which is the form of nastaliq, and we're coming to Nastalik very soon. Next slide. La taqnatu min rahmatullah. Do not despair of the mercy of God. Next slide. Allahu nurus samawat wal arz. Allah is the luminous light of the uh, heavens and earth. Next slide. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In uh, Divani style. Next slide. Faskuruni az kurkum. Washkuruli la takfurun. So glorify me, God says, and I will grant you eminence. And be thankful and be not ungrateful to me. Next slide. Divani jelly is a more, more flourish. More uh, beautification, Bismillah rahman rahim Next slide. More flourish, Divani jelly. Next slide. Now coming to uh, a, a very beautiful one. It's my favorite. It's called Nastalik. It's called Bride of Arabic Calligraphy. It's a refined, beautiful, modern, hybrid Islamic calligraphy script. Its name is a combination of the words Nasr and Talik. Very elegant, highly legible, and can be written quickly and uh, compactly. Mir Ali Tabrizi was the originator of this beautiful script, and it originated in Persia. And uh, Persian is written in this particular khat, particularly the, the one written in calligraphy. Urdu, my language of birth, uh, as well as in India. So Pakistan, India, and Iran, uh, this khat is highly prevalent. Next, next slide. And oh, go back, go back to uh, the previous slide. You see the swans? This gentleman actually saw these in his dream. And it's, as you can see, the words the, the alphabets are hanging and just beautiful swoop there like the neck of the swan. Um, they have all kinds of, uh, you know, thinking about how to write it. Next slide. Uh, next slide. This is uh, Muhammad Zakaria has written Bismillah Rahman Rahim in, in Nastaliq style. Very beautiful. 
Next. Man kataba bismillah rahman rahim bi husni al-khat dakhal al-jannah bi ghair hisab. He whoever writes bismillah rahman rahim in beautiful khat will enter paradise. I'll put it in my pocket. <laughs> Next slide, please. This is about Mir Ali Tabrizi. Uh, after dreaming one night about geese, this was actually, uh, that, that's what it was actually. Mir Ali Tabrizi adapted the shape and motion of their wings into visual form, creating the nostalgic script. Next slide. Imad al Hassani was another famous Nastaliq writer. He was, however, treated badly, and uh, in the end, his uh, rivals uh, murdered him. So, uh, jealous rivals and all that. Next slide. Yuthil Hikmat Amin Yasha. God will grant wisdom to whoever he wishes. You can ask for it, but he can, <laughs> he'll give it to whoever he wishes. Next slide. Allah Samad. Allah is unique and independent. Next slide. Well, you see the swooping down. And this is the one, Allah Zikrullah Taqmanu Qulub. It is the remembrance of Allah that brings peace to your heart. And there is a Urdu. Uh, share or verse, na dunya se, na daulat se, na ghar abad karne se, tasalli dil ko hoti hai, khuda ko yaad karne se. It's not your wealth, your beautiful homes uh, that will help you. It's remembrance of God that will bring peace to your heart. Next slide. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the Stalik, uh, my rendition. Next. This is shikasta, a little bit more refined, uh, modified form of uh, khat from nastalik. As you can see, the noon goes like this instead of like this. And uh, so this is the first chapter of the Quran. Next. Same thing again. This is shikasta. Shikasta means broken. So it's the poetry that's usually written in shikaste style. It's, it's nostalgic, but if your heart is broken, you write it in shikaste. So, <coughs> and my hearts are very much broken in Pakistan. It's unrequited love. So, uh, next. And uh, same thing again. It's the uh, first chapter written with more pronounced uh, swooping of the noons and all that. Next. This is an amazing guy. I've never met him, but he's my friend on Facebook called by the name of Meher Rashid. He, he modified Nastaliq. He's from Pakistan. He's from Islamabad. Next slide. This is what he did. The K, the, it, it is just amazingly long hanging scene, and noon is so wide, and he does that, it's just beautiful. And I wanted to copy it, and I got his permission. He said, yeah, go ahead. As long as you attribute it to me, it's fine. So next, next slide. And look at this. This is, in Allah ala kulli shayin kadir. Indeed, Allah is, is powerful on everything. He can do anything. And this is Mahar Rashid. Uh, I, uh, it's also called Rishidiya Khat, by the way, so not uh, unsurprising. Next. And this is Muhammad, Allah and Muhammad. Again, this is uh, a verse from Iqbal's, Har Lahza Hai Mumin Ki Nai Shan Nai Baan. I will, it'll take me a long time to explain all this, but just look at the visual beauty of it. Next slide. Ini patharon pe chalkar agar aasako to ao. This is Nastaliq. 
मेरे घर के रास्ते में कोई कहकशा नहीं है इफ यू कैन वॉक ऑन स्टोन टू गेट टू माई होम प्लीज कम ऑन कम ऑन ओवर आई डोंट हैव एनी वट इज कैकशा रेनबो टू माई होम विद द पार ऑफ गोल्ड एट द एंड नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट बेखतर कूद पड़ा आतश नमरूद में इश्क अक्ल है मह वि तमाशा है लबे पाम अभी दिस इज ए पोइट्री ऑफ इकबाल सो नस्तालीक इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर राइटिंग पर्जन एंड उर्दू पोइट्री नेक्स्ट ई काफला उम्र अजब मी गुजर दरियाब दमी के बाद तरब मी गुजर दिस पर्जन The caravan of lifetime goes strangely. Be aware of the moment that passes with happiness. So enjoy the good times, because life goes by very fast. Simple. Next. This is a form called chalipa. Chalipa is salib or cross. I don't see a cross here, but um, this is the way it's written. The diagonal hemi stitches of a poem two up there and two down there written by imad al hasani a famous calligrapher next this is maghrabi we already seen that next is uh, wa inna kala ala khulqin azim is about the prophet you the prophet have the highest esteem and highest character next slide bismillahir rahmanir rahim in maghrabi style next this gentleman hamid ajami from iran from tehran actually created this absolutely gorgeous uh khat i'm running out of words to say about gorgeous beautiful uh, astoundingly gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, called khate muwalla muwalla mean high up and this is bismillah i love writing in khate muwalla and sally knows that uh, bismillah ir rahman ir rahim next la haula wala quwwata illa billah there's no power no strength except from allah in muwalla khat next la ghalib illa allah this particular phrase exists all over alhamra the only victor is god period and this is all over um, alhamra castle next next slide the splendor of ottoman calligraphy next slide Despite the abolition of the Arabic script in Turkey in 1928 I don't know how th- this particular language and its writing persisted there or 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 lived there actually the Turkish masters are still considered to be among the leading practitioners of Arabic calligraphy in the Islamic world so if somebody wants to learn um calligraphy Islamic calligraphy they should go to Istanbul Istanbul is the center uh of of study uh from the great masters it re- it, it reached its zenith during the Ottoman era next this gentleman turkish philanthropist um we're okay we have another 25 30 minutes so um so there is a relationship between the master and the apprentice and uh, that is sort of going away because a lot of people because of the internet including myself and because of my age i'm not going to go uh, live in turkey uh, or istanbul alone so master apprentice relationship is really very important in learning calligraphy next see hamdullah was uh, 
a very powerful calligrapher. Next, and he was from, from um, uh, Ottoman era. Uh, Hafiz Usman was another one who uh, was very famous for writing Nasr script very quickly and beautifully. He wrote 25 copies of the Quran, uh, and examples are held at the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul and Nasr Khalili collection. Next. This is calligraphy by Hafiz Usman. Very beautiful, written, written in Nasr. Next. Hagia Sophia, which was a church, and then Mamad the Conqueror uh, was responsible for conquest of Constantinople that brought an end to the Byzantine Empire. But interestingly, they have not removed, thankfully, the icons of uh, Hazrat Isa, Jesus, and his mother, Maryam. And uh, the place, of course, is replete with, next slide, replete with Arabic calligraphy. And these are called roundels, huge roundels. Allah's name, Prophet's name, and uh, the Khulafai Rashidin, the first four caliphs' names, uh, and uh, uh, just absolutely amazing place. We really enjoyed it, Sally and I. Just... Next slide. Now we're going to meet Hassan Shalabi. He is, uh, this is an old picture of his elderly teacher sitting raptly, and he's trying to write or probably making corrections uh, on his writing. This is Hassan Shalabi today. Next. The art is to treat the souls of people. Master calligrapher Hassan Shalabi is a living legend. For many, he's seen as the reviver of Islamic calligraphy of our time. Having started his life as an imam, Shalabi's heart was filled with the words of God and his messenger. He took an interest in calligraphy and has been making history ever since. Next. This is his Bismillah rahman rahim Next slide. Allah you are in fi kullal umur. God is the only one that will help you with every matter in a circle form. Next. This is the same I, I um, showed before. Uh, God just uh, make every task easy for me and not difficult for me and let it end right. Next. This is the first chapter of Quran in Nastaliq. Of course, they write all kinds of stuff. Divani was created in, in uh, uh, Turkey, Istanbul. Next. This is beautiful. It's called Hilya, H-I-L-Y-E. Uh, it's beautifully written, and it's actually a uh, saying of uh, Hazrat Ali just the physical characteristics of the prophet. And it's called Hilya. They usually make it a huge one, and people love to have them in the mosques and at their homes. Next. I love this slide, or this saying. Quran was revealed in Mecca. It was recited in Egypt and written in Istanbul. So Islamic calligraphy is an art of love and practice. It demands patience and endless endeavor. Next. And his uh, biography, very brief, but good, and uh, examples of his uh, artistic uh, capabilities was shown in this particular book in honor of Hassan Shalabi's 50th year of art, published by Al Baraka in Istanbul. Calligrapher paints his love on paper with a reed pen. The reed that wails in the hand of the flute player 
for the pain of separation. We talked about that. Dances in the hand of the calligrapher in trance. Rakse kalam. So the kalam goes crazy. Yearning for reunion. Each one of its moves expresses him, God, on each stop. It leaves traces from him. Next slide. This is Bismillah written by Hassan Chalabi. Um, the pen never leaves the column until it's finished. So they just keep writing. Next. The first requirement is to love the art, he says. Love comes before skill. If someone doesn't desire khat or calligraphy, they will not succeed. Today, I can't write the Latin alphabet as my hand shakes too much. When I try to read a book, I can't read more than 15 pages without falling asleep. But with khat, my hand stays steady, and there are times when I can study the art 10 hours or more without lifting my head, because I love it. It is also necessary to have patience, a good teaching, and a good working environment. It is important to be writing every day, especially when you're a beginner. I tell my students they must put in 30 hours a day. Next. So this is just an example of Ottoman calligraphy, <coughs> the whirling dervish. It's the name of Rumi, Ya Maulana Hazrat. Uh, that's also the name of Jalaluddin Rumi who was originally Persian and settled in Turkey, and he's buried in, in Turkey. The most famous poet in, in America, actually. Next. Tukhra. Tukhra is a very interesting calligraphy uh, piece used by the Ottoman sultans as their signature, as a stamp of authority and the royal emblem of this sultan. The genius was that it was, or they claimed that it was difficult to forge. Uh, it has certain vertical shafts and reminiscent of uh, uh, the ship and two circles or eggs and the bottom. Next, I'll show you a couple of examples. Okay, the ship. And next, Bismillah Rahman Rahim written Tugra form, T U G H R A. Next, it's my attempt a long time ago. It's gotten better. <laughs> Next, and this is by a, a professional calligrapher. I'm just an amateur, but absolutely beautifully written. Uh, and he is actually a professor of economics in uh, Boston and also does a little bit of uh, calligraphy on the side. Next. A few words about illumination, because it's not just calligraphy. It's the illumination and arabesque. Those are the three components of Islamic art. Islamic art of illumination, also called tazhip, from Ottoman to contemporary times. Good book. Next. Derived from the Arabic word for gold, the art of illumination has been practiced as a book art in many Muslim cultures. Turkish illumination is still used in handmade books, uh, book production, but also with calligraphy, so they combine it so it looks more beautiful, adding gold and different beautiful colors. Next, as you can see, the examples. Gold is the prominent one, and then of course butterfly, and numerous other motifs. Next. Ah, gorgeous. Next. Prophet's name in, in a circle. Next. This is an uh, illuminated page of a Quran by the 16th century Ottoman calligrapher, Ahmad. Shamsuddin Kara Hisari. Next. We are now to Muhammad Zakaria. This book was published 
by uh, Gray Henry, Aisha, who runs Fonz Vitae, and was published in September, actually. I found out on Amazon, and uh, I tried to pre-order it. Well, they couldn't find it. So I said, well, I'll call the publisher, who happens to be in my city. So I called her. He knew me, uh, she knew me, and invited Sally and I to go. Uh, she has about 14 copies, so I bought one. And she then gave us a little tour of basement that was just full of books, because she publishes books. Uh, Zachariah is described as a maverick at the forefront of a global resurgence of traditional Islamic calligraphy. He does traditional, uh, standardized, old, which is still new, uh, calligraphy. He's a 21st century master calligrapher. Um, and he brought this, this art form in the United States. He was uh, a, a rebel in the 1960s, born in the 40s. He was uh, just sort of, he, he was really not, not a school or college educated, but he, um, Next slide, next. Uh, he just read everything himself. He went to different countries, went to Morocco, found a teacher to teach him calligraphy. Uh, we back up a little bit. He saw a calligraphy piece in a shop run by a Palestinian in uh, uh, Los Angeles. And he was very intrigued by it. He says, very, very beautiful, what is it? And the guy actually just said, you know, you don't understand this. You will not understand this. So that was uh, uh, very hurtful, but he was hooked. He went to Morocco, he went to um, England in the, in the library, and he read a lot of books about Islamic calligraphy, make the story short. And he also worked in the British comic troupe uh, to make a living. And uh, then he came back and started uh, working on his uh, 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 calligraphy practice. He eventually got hold of uh, Hassan Chalabi. So they did, by mail, they, they had this relationship of student, apprentice, and, and teacher relationship. They eventually met, uh, but, but that's how he wrote calligraphy. So Zachariah is considered the preeminent ambassador of the art of Islamic calligraphy in America. And he has taught a lot of people. Uh, next. <clears throat> That's him. Next. And he was responsible for, um, he, he was commissioned to really make these stamps, Eid stamps, the first and the second one. Uh, next. This was actually in, in Louisville. This is our friend. Um, and uh, the uh, mayor is there, old mayor now. And this is the second postage stamp that he was commissioned to do. Next. Bismillah Rahman Rahim in Astalik. Next. Written in gold, ink. That's the Shahada, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah and Muhammad is Prophet. Next. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to God. Next. Bismillah, again in a different khat. Uh, that's the Sulus. Next. Kullu ma'rufu sadaqa. Every beneficial work is charity. Next. Gold, work, next. This shall be finally the mat, and he taught him a few things. Shall be did, taught, taught Zachariah, next. Sometimes people ask me, what does it feel like to do such work? He is a metal worker as well, and works on astrolabes and 
Well, he was a machinist to begin with, so he invented things. Uh, he said there is no good answer except awareness of the standards that have been set for the art and the responsibility to be faithful to them. So rather than think of myself as a calligrapher, I still think of myself as becoming a calligrapher. I mean, there's no end to it. You can keep practicing. It's actually akin to medicine. You keep practicing medicine until you die. You never become perfect. And calligraphers also think that you can continue to practice all your life. You'll never become perfect. So every calligrapher, no matter how advanced they are, they write mushk or exercise uh, when they sign papers. Next. And then a few words about uh, ladies, who, uh, Muslim ladies who have really achieved a lot. Uh, next, and there were Muslim female calligraphers as well. This is from Iran. Next, and uh, women calligraphers have continued to breathe new life into this rich and ever evolving art over the centuries. Next. The universe derives its colors from the existence of women. She is the leading instrument in the grand orchestra of life itself. Next. To God belongs the names most beautiful. A female calligrapher, amazing artist by the name of Nayar Ehsan Rashid from Islamabad. And I, I am very lucky to have this beautiful book. It's a coffee table book. And uh, she has written God's 99 names and explanations and her own perspectives on them. Next. Next. Female calligraphers book has been published as well. Very important book, 229 pages. The History of Calligraphy of the Muslim Female Calligraphers. Written in Turkish and English, the book consists of bio sketches of past and present Muslim female calligraphers. Over 160 female calligraphers have been listed from 7th to the 21st century. Next. This is her in the presence of the master. Uh, her name is Hilal Kazan, K-A-Z-A-N. Next. Suraya Syed Sanders has Pakistani, ru uh, Pakistani uh, root. Her father, born in Kenya, uh, but was originally from Pakistan, came to live in the United, S United Kingdom in the 1960s. Her mother, French, uh, and she became a calligrapher. Go figure. So next. This is her writing, Nurun Ala Nur, light after light. Next. This is Sana Naveed Houston, young lady. Um, she's actually a pupil or student of uh, Zakaria. Next. This is her writing, La ilaha illallah. Next. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Next. This brings me to Khate Salim. I started working on this about five years ago and eventually came to this one. And this is written by my friend by the name of Eta Sham, who is a remarkable calligrapher himself. Uh, he told me to call it Khate Salim. I'm not uh, really uh, that proud to do that. But Salim is Salim means uh, a pure heart. Kalb Salim is in the Quran. So a couple of other friends uh, of mine, one here and one in Islamabad, also recommended that I should call it Khat Salim. So I said, sure, why not? Next. So um, Sham wrote this. This is in Khat Salim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And this is in Khate Rashid, Rashid al Qalam. I met him. There is no relation. His name is Rashid Sayal. But this is his new invention. 
And this one is a master calligrapher who has passed now, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, written in Khat Rana, or beautiful Khat. So these are three people. Uh, I am among them. I'm very happy to be there uh, from Multan. That, uh, three uh, calligraphers from Multan. Multan is an ancient city that had been visited by Alexander the Great as well. Next. So Bismillah Rahman Rahim is in Khat Salim. Next. We're getting there now, getting close. The aesthetic beauty is one of the major, um, indeed, principal arts uh, of the centuries, Islamic calligraphy is. Um, it was purely used as a decoration in Byzantine work, early Italian paintings, and even on the facades of medieval French churches, as at Le Puy. Artists who devised these inscriptions were responsive to the beauty of the pure forms of Arabic calligraphy. Next. Western art's debt to Islamic world, Florence and Baghdad. Um, I think you had asked me a question about the paintings in this book. I'll, I'll actually give it to you. It's a, a wonderful book. I just got it. so. Hans Belting is his name, and he shook up the arts world. He was, he is, he's living, he is a critic and historian of uh, Western art. Next. The theory of perspective that changed the course of Western art originated elsewhere. It was formulated in Baghdad by the 11th century mathematician Ibn al-Haythan, known in the West as Al-Hazan. Hans Belting, a German art historian, narrates the historical encounter between science and art between Arab Baghdad and Renaissance Florence that has had a lasting effect on the culture of the West. It addresses the particular book, a provocative question that reaches beyond the realm of aesthetics and math mathematics. What happens when Muslims and Christians look upon each other and find their way of viewing the world transformed as a result. Next. So he shook things up and all that. So uh, uh, because Europeans have, in general, liked to think of Arabs as barbarians, enemies, iconoclasts, that they can still feel shocking today. Ironically, it comes down to divergent interpretation of the exact same law from the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or to quote in full, because it's easy to misinterpret otherwise. Next. pseudo kufic is a term for, uh, in the Middle Ages, actually, they, after the Crusades, they brought pieces of calligraphy and fell in love with it. So they started using it uh, without even knowing the, the meaning of it. So that's called pseudo kufic Kufesque, or Pseudo-Arabic. Next. So this is like gibberish. I mean, gibberish, word gibberish comes from Arabic, too. Uh, you can't make sense of anything. You can read it, and you don't. I mean, you can't really read it. So I mean, it looks like Arabic, doesn't it? But it does not have any meaning. It's gibberish. It's written in gibberish. Next. And this is uh, on the hem of the Virgin's mantle. And uh, the uh, artists are written there. They look like they're Arabic, but there's nothing there. There's no there there. <laughs> Next. Pseudo-Arabic script in, uh, in the Virgin Mary's halo, detail of adoration of the Magi. The script is further divided into rosettes and uh, and uh, like those on Mamluk uh, dishes. Mamluk is Egyptian. Uh, next. So beautiful Islamic calligraphy transmits the immutable essence, and the calligrapher strives to attain copy of divine perfection in his, her work. Michelangelo said, good painting is nothing but a copy of the perfection of God. Um, I think we're getting close to. I am a little bit above. So let's go through 
next slides rather quickly. Let's get to the very end. Okay, otherwise, we'll be here. Um, these are domes, and uh, I keep going. Yeah, so these are inscriptions written on the domes and arches throughout the world. Taj Mahal, we want to go there. And uh, on the front uh, gate, it says, O soul, thou art at rest. Return to the Lord at peace with him, and, and uh, he at peace with you. Taj Mahal was built in memory of departed wife of Shah Jahan, and uh, Mumtaz Mahal was her name. And next, so it goes on about uh, describing the Arabic inscriptions inside the Taj Mahal. They brought a, Shah Jahan brought a calligrapher from Persia by the name of, uh, well, he gave him the name of Amanat Khan the heirloom who will be remembered all, all his life and beyond. His name was Abdul Haq. Next. So this is his signature, actually. Al-Kataba Al-Fakir Al-Hakir Amarat Khan. Um, they write very uh, humbly that I'm, I'm just a beggar and I'm really down there when Shah Jahan is up there. Uh, next. Anyway, so all kinds of uh, inscriptions actually is, is uh, in the marble. It's not just written on that, it's engraved. So a lot of work. Many, many people were involved. Next. Yeah, keep going. Allama Bil Qalam is a book about Pakistani calligraphers. And I don't want to bore you, just let's keep going. And uh, this is a book written by uh, M. Athar Tahir. And uh, my friend, he was here this morning, I don't know if he's here or not. Khalid Kalon gave this book to me, brought it from Pakistan. He's written about calligraph art. So apart from traditional calligraphy, they've added stuff. In the 1960s in Pakistan, uh, they added stuff, the color and uh, westernized uh, paintings. So that is called calligraph, calligraph art. And some people have fused it together. Next. So, um, there is a movement called Hurufiya. Huruf is the alphabets or calligraph art. The artist calligraphers have experimented with the genre. Sada Khan, Shakir Ali, Muhammad Hanif Rame, and many others have done astounding work. So there is some alternative movement, uh, but most of it is calligraphy. And on top of that, they've added a lot of uh, Western because of the Western influence. Next. This is Sadakan, who was an amazing person. I mean, I can just give a talk about him for an hour. He was uh, a um, Renaissance man, actually. He was a poet, and uh, he was a painter, and he was a calligrapher. He came up with his own khat. It's called khat Sadakan. Next. Let's at least see that. That's his khat I've written in, 19, in, in 2017. Next. And that's it's a little difficult to see, but it's la ilaha illallah in his own, own uh, khat. Next. And this is, uh, once again, Fabi Yi Alai Rabbi Kazaban. He wrote the entire chapter of Ar Rahman. Next. Next, next, next. It's very unique. I mean, he's written it. There's nobody else who has written. Uh, next. This is Ibn Kaleem, <coughs> who has written the Bismillah. Next. Ibn Kaleem again, about a couple of pieces of, 
of him from his sons because he himself is gone but left a huge amount of material behind. Next. And this is a young guy. I bought some pieces from him. He's very prolific. He's in his 30s, but uh, very experienced. Next. You can see his pieces. Absolutely beautiful. Next. 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 Whirling the Rish, drawn by me. Next. And this is a guy, Sajjad Khalid. <clears throat> He's a master calligrapher of Nastali. He's a poet himself. I had the occasion to go and meet him in his, in his uh, studio. Uh, next. And this was another master calligrapher from Lahore. Uh, I was so lucky to meet him. I brought my pieces, and he liked them, actually. Next. This is his writing. Next. This is uh, Shahid Rana from Lahore. And this is his latest piece post on Facebook. I bought some of his pieces, too. Uh, he went to National College of Arts in Lahore. Next. This is uh, his hut. And I've told him to call it after his name, but he's still very reluctant. Next. This is in Maghrabi, hut. I've written, Allah is the greatest, Allah Akbar. Next. Next, this is a Pakistani guy. He has moved to Dubai and has invented some gorgeous khats. Somewhat difficult to write. Next. Next. We're almost there because we can't finish without Tahir bin Kalandar. His father actually is a... Uh, Sufi sage in Pakistan. He went to uh, National College of Arts, one of the most reputed and young trendsetters in Pakistan. Next. This is what he does. This is his work. Astoundingly beautiful. Next. Stunningly gorgeous. Next. Superb. Next. Uh, Haji Noor Deen uh, Mi Guang Yang is a renowned master of Arabic calligraphy from China. Next. And this is his work in the circle form. Next. We're almost there. Next. Next. This is Sur. Uh, Ayatul Kursi in a circle. Next. This is uh, actually by a guy from East Pakistan, Bangladesh actually. So, next. This is uh, Apna Journal, 2017. Uh, they asked me to do the, the cover, and I wrote an article about uh, Islamic calligraphy, too. They've actually asked me now uh, to do it, and I had sent three pieces, and they've accepted all three, and they'll select one of them. Next. Spirit of calligraphy, let the pen write from the heart that is joyous and free. Hafiz aruz tarab namay ishke tu namisht. Ke qalam barsare asbab dele khurram zad. Calligraphy is a spiritual path that leads to tranquility of the heart. Calligraphy transmits the original breath, the one that gave rise to everything. Francois Cheng, Chinese French calligrapher. Externally, each line, each dot, each stroke should be alive, and the writing should be imbued with grace and dignity. Internally, calligraphy should be a prayer, a liberating experience that transmits joy, freedom, and peace to the heart. Next. I think that's our last one. Thank you very much for your attention. And I know I went a little bit over time. So 
my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Pleasure. And I thank you for the history lesson. We're much more knowledgeable thanks to you. I know it's, it is late, but I, I want to make sure we have time for people who have some questions today. Um, or if you uh, would like to communicate to me or to Salim, we can try to arrange some answers through email. I see a question in the audience. Let me bring the microphone to you. I've been amazed by what, what I've been seeing just in the past couple weeks, actually, with, with the advent. Uh, I'm both a little am amused and a little uh, anxious about what I'm seeing in the computer industry as far as AI-generated artwork. And I'm wondering if you have, or is there any value in computer-generated calligraphy in the Islamic tradition as seeing as it is a spiritual act, and it's an act of prayer. What, how, how do you value artificially made calligraphy? Right. Computers have changed our lives. I mean, uh, some uh, for the better, some not. So traditional Islamic calligraphy is uh, to be done with kalam, reed kalam, that you carve yourself. It's an entirely different feeling instead of just clicking. I, it's not for me. I have never gotten into it. There are some people do it, particularly younger generation, but the ones I have shown you, all of them have done it by hand. Um, there are certain fonts that can be used, and they are useful sometimes for communications, but calligraphy, the traditional calligraphy of Muhammad Zakaria, Hassan Shalabi, uh, Sajad Khalid, is not for the computers. It's my humble opinion. Other questions? Yes, please hold on. Are hand calligraphed uh, Quran still being produced? Hand calligraphed Qurans can be what? Are they still? Well, no, actually, a lot of calligraphers, uh, not me, I'm just not that patient, they do it. They do Qurans multiple times from beginning to end. Uh, and it's, most of the time it's in Naskh, which is easier to write, and that's the most prevalent form. Otherwise, it's very difficult to write in Nastaliq. I don't think there has been any in Nastaliq. Um, so my answer is that it's still being produced. Yeah. Any other additional questions? You mentioned the zoomorphic uh, calligraphy. Uh, I'm which, sorry, my, my daughter was congratulating me on my presentation. So. Oh. <laughs> you mentioned the zoomorphic uh, calligraphy, the uh, yeah. representational yeah. Uh, art. Um, there were, we also saw a, uh, a, a whirling dervish. What's the name for that? It's, it's not zoomorphic, is it? Yeah, is it, it is zoomorphic? zoomorphic. I mean, we're, okay. we're, we belong in the okay. Belong in the zoo, I guess. Exactly. But but we, we we're we're animals too. But some really purists um, don't really care for that. So, but I'm sort of in the middle. I'm modern, moderate. Um, Muslim, so, so I do it. Yes, one minute. Well, this is fascinating, and I see you might want to mention some of these pieces in front too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, with all the colors on the various pieces up there, um, is there like a special meaning to most of those? Because I saw a lot of the other pieces would have like colored themes, but I was just kind of wondering about like the colors p people pick for no, certain verses. No, I just pick whatever, you know, comes to my mind. But most people write black uh, ink and white background, or maybe a little bit uh, off-white background. But people are, are, are writing in colors, and I think it's beautiful. Thank you. 
Well, it, it, it all depends. Uh, if it's intricate, for example, this one, it's a copy of Sadak Khan's work. So I, I, it took me an hour, but uh, most of them half an hour or, or so. If it's in, intricate and it's uh, round or in a circle, uh, then of course if you make any mistake, then you have to start all over again on a different piece of paper. Like start again, please. I'm sorry. I mean, it just looks like you have to completely finish it before you can lift up, and it, that's impossible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you try to learn, and, uh, uh, or there could be a blob of ink, or uh, you just have to be careful how much ink to put on the tip of your, your pen. All right, Brody, do you see the chat room question? Oh. All right, uh, Jill Carmer asks, could every Arabic reader read the different kinds of Arabic calligraphy, uh, TS and art, and some have vowel sounds with PS and SHS, and others not so easy and just read right to left? Beautiful, thank you. Did the scripts on this, uh, the two well, whirling dervishes say anything. I really didn't understand the question. I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I can repeat this real quick. So there is a question somewhere in there, but <laughs> I missed it. All right. Uh, could every Arabic reader reader read the different kinds of Arabic calligraphy? And, yeah. Uh, well, yes, they do, um, because. Quran is in Arabic, so every day, uh, particularly if they're Muslims. In fact, there are some Christian calligraphers too. One name I'll give you is Wissam, W-I-S-S-A-M, Shaukat, S-H-A-U-K-A-T. He is a very, very good, excellent uh, calligrapher. Uh, so yes, Arabs read uh, Arabic calligraphy as well. Probably Thank enough. You've had a, a Thank long Thank you very evening. much for your attention, all the Zoom people. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, take some uh, uh, handouts. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And uh, please come here and look at the things.